so shocked. Like, first off, can we say Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are back? I am so impressed by the Brooklyn Nets this game that I might go out and say they're really going to challenge the Bucks and the Raptors for the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. So, I'm making this video with the game almost over. I pretty much know the game is over. And Kevin Durant, this man, I remember the commentator saying that Steve Kerr said he was about 90% back. And if they, like Chris Weber said, if he's 90% back, he's still one of the best players in the NBA. This guy, I think it was like his first six shots were swishes. Like when I mean such switches, it was nothing but net on his first six shots. And Kyrie Irving, I think was passing the most I've seen him pass since his Cleveland days in LeBron. You can tell that Steve Nash made the ball movement one of the biggest emphasis, emphasis, emphasizations on the offense. I, I might have made up a word right there. But that was something that you saw in the beginning of the game. They were just throwing that ball around continuously. And another player I want to talk about is Karis LeVert. They were so smart. Karis LeVert looks like he's embracing the hell out of the six man off the bench running the thing I, he could be like a 17 18 point score off the bench for them let's talk about joe harris i don't know why i just said that way joe harris this guy you could see kevin durant at first yelling at him take those shots like he was like if you have a shot pretty much take it another thing we saw was that i think kyrie and kevin durant are really embracing the leadership role this year I think I really love the ball move in this. Kyrie just seems like the veteran player he always dreamed of. I remember a few years ago, or maybe it was a year or two ago, Kyrie called LeBron and was talking about how to be the leader and stuff. And it looks like Kyrie might not be the main leader. Like, this is still Kevin Durant's team. I also want to say, Jared Allen's hair is massive. Like, is that Afro? Like, just got steroids? Did that Afro get bigger? And I think Kyrie... It's a Batman and Robin duel, but I think it's more like, just like, they're pretty much almost equals. I think Kyrie is the guy who's facilitating the offense, and he he really seems like he's there, like he's moving around, he's trying on defense, like he like he's always was seeming like he was always trying to pick off every pass that was near him, and I know he seemed like he was doing sometimes off the ball with Kevin Durant doing a lot of ball handling, but. I really think Kyrie, he might not have his best scoring year, but I think he's going to have his best efficiency year. He's going to have his best passing year, like most assists. I really think he's going to be a true point guard this year. Kevin Durant, I just think he's going to win comeback player of the year. It's going to be an insane year for that man. Karis LeVert, may most improved player I could see. He like I could see him taking a whole step into a whole new level of efficiency that's just absurd that i didn't even expect him to be able to do and i really like this player this guy karis levert i could see him being a guy who like i said 17 18 points shooting like 38 percent from three and landry shaman he looked like fucking ass earlier in the game but he started to pick up his pace like his first two touches were terrible deandre jordan Another looks like he's a veteran savvy guy, another leader of the team. He seems like he's going to be a guy, just his vocal presence is always going to be there. And he 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 controls the paint. That's something they're going to be really good. Jared Allen and him are going to just be interchangeable at center. They're always going to control the paint. They're going to be a team that's going to make you try and shoot. You saw that where we like telling James Wiseman and like Eric Pascal and everyone who would they didn't want to score inside. They were like, pretty much go try to score outside. Take that jumper. Take that jumper. That's what they were pretty much telling them. They were like, we're not going to let you score two points. We see the kind of like seven seconds offensive influence, like I said, with the ball movement from Mike D'Antoni being on the staff. But they are loving getting into the lanes and stuff. I just think this team is just going to be really freaking good. A lot better than what people expected. All in all. I think this was just a great, great game for the Brooklyn Nets. And I was saying earlier that if the Brooklyn Nets weren't playing good, that they were going to probably trade for James Harden. I don't think they're going to do any trades. They have so much depth on this team that it's it's really ridiculous, especially with Steve Nash there. Now he's just figuring out the lineups. Dinwiddie, another point guard who's just pretty much, a, I feel like, would be a starting point guard for any other team. Let me take a sip of this. What is it? I think this is Coke my sister got me or it's root beer. 
Coke Zero. Wanted root beer. I know there was definitely root beer. They went to Wawa. Do people have Wawa where you guys are? No, uh, I'm in I'm back home at Maryland, but I, it's not my home. I live in Kansas now because I go to school there. Either way, let's go back to Nets. And one of the things that I really like about the Nets besides that is just how much depth they have at the guard position. Torian Prince, oh, he was doing some great stuff on defense that I really liked. And so was Karis LeVert. He was... He just, him off the bench, just gives him the freedom to do what he wants, and it kind of incentivizes him to enjoy the role of playing off the bench. But there was just a move where he got a, a, a pick from Jared Allen, and he just, instead of driving, he just did a little crossover, set his feet, and pulled up and wetted a three-point shot, and it was great. And, you know, I think what they're just going to need to do is... First off, they're going to be scoring hella points. I think one thing they're just going to have to make sure is they don't have a true, like, power four. The power four looks like probably going to be a mix of Kevin Durant, Torian Prince, and I could see a few other guys being mixed in there. But I really think the power four is going to be their biggest weakness. Maybe when Karis LeVert is in the game or Joe Harris is in the game. <coughs> Sorry, it's not what you think it is. I'm, I'm safe. I'm negative. Either way, I think what they're going to come down to is when the guys are gassed and or if someone's hurt like Harris LeVert or one of their bench guys, their depth, if they lose a few guys to injuries, their depth could be really, really affected due to the fact that they're, they don't have a hell of depth. So I just think that's one area of concern they could have. But besides that, that's pretty much my recap of the game. It was a great game by the Brooklyn Nets. They shot great from three. They did really good at rebounding the boards. They controlled the game. They blew out the Golden State Warriors. So it was a really good game. I think that, you know, like it was just a great game. So that's pretty much the video. I'm making it to eight minutes right now. But I do really hope you guys do. My dog did just ruin the last video. But we're good now. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. That's pretty much it. We're milking it to eight minutes. But as always, guys, I do hope you guys have a great day. Because I know I will. Till next time, guys. But yeah, that's the end of the video, man. Just listen to me chug this Red Bull. Ah.